Oh my goodness. Who was right? Hello, world. What's up? Welcome to Build. I'm your host, Matt Forte. We are here live at the Build Studio in New York City. Our next guest stars in the hit CW show, Black Lightning. You'll recognize him for his instant classic turn as the villain, Tobias Whale, with season two set to wrap up and season three recently confirmed. There's a lot to talk about. I'm super pumped. He's found a second to swing by and hang out with us once again. Ladies and gentlemen, Marvin Jones III is in the building. How about that? Yeah. Uh, we're going to bring him out. We're going to get started in just a second. But first, I believe we have a peek at tonight's episode. So let's go ahead and run that clip. My hot-headed 16-year-old daughter is a walking nuclear bomb. There's a possibility you would explode. Don't go nowhere. Where would I go? Things just got a little more interesting. Where's Tobias? Oh, man. Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise. Welcome back. Marvin Jones III. Hey. How's everybody Woo. doing? <laughs> oh man, that is that is ominous. Where's Tobias, man? You're in trouble. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not liked too too much right now. Oh, the not... hated guy right now, yeah. for sure. Kind of fun to hate you right now, though, man. You do such a great job with this character. I'm excited uh, to talk to you about it. Hey, thank, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Uh, so thanks much. you. Thank you, man. Thanks to you for for coming and hanging out with us again. And uh, as I was saying backstage, congratulations, season three officially hey, coming back. We'll yes, hope for a pause. All right. Hey. Yes. Yes. Very happy about that. Mm. Very blessed and happy about that. Where were you when you found out? How'd you get the news? Oh, it's Both. a funny story. Um, no, it, it's funny. An uh, actor friend of mine, um, fellow actor, excuse me, named Chris Green, we actually have the same acting coach. Um, I was in my garage, cleaning my garage. And, uh, and um, yeah, and he sent me a text. And he says, um, hey, man, what's up, man? You know, congratulations on the renewal. And my reply was, renewal on what? <laughs> like, like, yeah, exactly. I'm like, what? So are you saying the guy's going to let me stay? <laughs> um, no, and, and, and he took a while to respond after that. Because, yeah, he's like, oh. And then I did my homework. I went online, and um, I just, my curiosity yeah, yeah. burned me. Like, what is he talking about, renewal? And um, and I went online as soon as I turned on the the internet on my phone um, or went on one of the the apps on my phone. Excuse me. It uh, I saw a big renewal. Yeah. I don't know if you guys saw the CW post for all the renewals, and it just it just said the, the it had this picture, and it said renewal Cross hashtag on the front. Yeah. <laughs> and then I thought, well. Is this a fan doing this? That you know that you know because it was it just was. I so, thought the same thing when I saw that graphic. I'm like, yeah, is a fan having their a field day with our our emotions right now today? <laughs> um, it was a great thing. It was. It, I felt extremely blessed and surprised at the same time. And you know, uh, the, some of the best blessings come when you're surprised. Yeah, when you're cleaning your garage. Exactly. Yeah. They do. They do. That's why it's not it's not just sound advice as an adult, but the best things happen when you clean your garage. And so they everybody, do. Actually, they do. Everybody should. Read. A lot of things are discovered and revealed <laughs> when you clean your garage, for better or worse, for sure, indeed. Um, you know, it's funny you bring up a great point. Uh, sort of the fan community around us. You see a picture, no matter how great it looks, you wonder like, has a fan done that? That's that's got to be a, a, a great feeling too. What's that been like? Here we are, season two, and, and the fan support. There's fan art. Somebody was was Tobias for Halloween. I saw you yeah. posted that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was what a couple does that of... feel like? This this thing that you've put out into the world that you've worked on. People are responding in this way with this energy. It's incredible. It's overwhelming. You know, to be honest, um, the reception the show has gotten is something that I don't think that anybody expected in the beginning. You know, um, here we are about to um, embark on our finales of season two. We're about four episodes away from that and 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 now preparing for season three. And it seems like the show is, is growing and growing still every day and it's being discovered by new people and, and creating like a family. Like our fans are like family because they they invest so much time, effort, and energy into the show and, and into the thoughts of what could or should happen. Yeah. Um, you know, we have a great, great writing staff, um, production and cast, you know, all together. And we are a big family, you know, from behind the scenes to in front of the camera. So to see our work collectively received so well, man, it's just, it's a, it's honestly just a dream come true. 
in in every aspect of the word for sure. I, yeah, I can't I can't even imagine how good that feels, especially this show. You know, we were talking briefly backstage about the the significance uh, of community within the show and where you guys film it before episode one ever aired on this show. There were articles about the significance of Black Lightning, how important this show was, and what it meant culturally. And and I'm I'm very curious going in. Did you guys feel any of that pressure? Were, were, was that a uh, daunting uh, aspect to it for you to come into this show with these lofty expectations and, and people putting so much meaning behind it before you, you, you even got to see the show? They, they, they knew what they wanted it to be. What was that like on that side? You know, um, that's a great question. It, it definitely was, I wouldn't say pressure, more so than a responsibility. You know, I think that everybody involved in the show, like I say, from in front of the camera and behind, um, felt a unique responsibility to uphold something um, that and represent something yeah. that was, you know, understated and, and not represented in our community. And, you know, with the social injustices that we speak about on the show and all the political issues, past and present, that we speak on on the show, I think it was just a big sense of responsibility. And, and now with the show, you know, being the success that it is, I think it comes with an extra layer of accountability now um, for, you know, one being almost a, a, uh, a launch pad, you know, for the ideas, you know, the views and the, the special needs, the unique needs that, you know, not just our community, but our society yeah. as a whole needs you know i think black lightning filled that void quite well that and that feels that responsibility it feels like a heavy one is that something that when you're in front of the camera and you're and you're playing your character do you have to kind of put that aside or compartmentalize and not let it uh get to you in that moment that the most definitely i know i do yeah yeah my character does <laughs> if you guys watch you know my character has to compartmentalize and be focused on being the heel yeah. um, of the show. And, and, but at the same time, yeah, no, you know, when we're on set and off set, you know, and I think off set is a, even a bigger responsibility and accountability because now at this point, we're representing the platform that we present every week, right. um, you know, off screen, you know, I, especially, like I say, my character, I, 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 I don't, you know, the audience was, looks lovely. I don't know how they see me though, you know, <laughs> based off of what they what they know of me on television. So I'm always conscious of that, and I try to be mindful of that as well. Well, that's actually that brings up a really interesting question because we were talking backstage about you guys that you film in Atlanta and how uh, community is so important on this show and and being in their backyard. They've embraced it as as part of their you know their real world community, and it's hard for you guys to go out. You get recognized everywhere as the heel. How are you react? Like how do they react to you when they see you? Is it is it positive? Are they separating? You know. Uh, Marvin from Tobias, or do they see the some villain? And really, do. Like, how does that play out? Yeah, some people. It depends on what I'm wearing. I think <laughs> <laughs> you go some out with the shades yeah, and the yeah, suit. Thing. <laughs> it depends on what I'm wearing. Um, I honestly, you know, you guys, I, I don't wear suits now often in public like that. I don't. I, you know, if you notice my buttons button to the top here and the certain things, I try to wear my glasses. Um, <laughs> people. Um, they, they receive me with a smile and a lot of love. I think a lot of times, you know, it's the awe of actually seeing this guy who you spend so much time with, uh, who comes into your home every week. Um, and I take the 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 honor of that, the privilege of that, seriously. So I try to greet people who expect a frown with a smile, yeah. you know, and a hug, and I try to be as warm as I can because I know week to week they got issues with me, <laughs> you know, week to week, depending on what happens that particular week. I'm quite aware of that. I mean, I watch and have issues with myself. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I, I try to be mindful of that and, and, and represent the good in Marvin Jones at all times. That's what I do. Anybody ever get mad at you for not being mean, for being so nice? Like, they, no, have, they no. want you to be away? <laughs> no, you know, especially, you know, I would say people that I would consider my seniors and, and it's th those are the funniest to me because, you know, they're so invested in the show and they really are mad at me at times, you know. I, they, I'll see, I'll meet a, a, a woman and, you know, or a family, and, and they'll just look at me and give me this look like this and point their finger at me like that, <laughs> you know, and then I gotta give them a big hug and a kiss or whatever and say, no, it's just on TV. <laughs> I'm not really that guy. <laughs> 
You know, you, you talked about, uh, we've talked a little bit about the, the responsibility, the sense of responsibility and how it's not really a pressure. Uh, and I wonder if there's any parallel for you in when you were coming up a, as a rapper, as an artist, yeah. now all of the, the motivation was, was mostly internal and, and all of the, the pressure or the responsibility was coming from, uh, you know, I want to be seen, I want to be heard. Now, uh, all of those forces are, are sort of external and from other people's expectations and other people's desires and responsibilities that per, they're projecting onto you have, have have you found that you deal with that sort of stuff differently is it two separate parts of your brain or is there overlap that you didn't maybe expect kind of navigating uh, these different worlds these different uh, planets on my flight here to New York I, I had the opportunity to f fly with a great friend of mine Sway Calloway and um, he's been a supporter and um, just a constant in my career from both sides from the music side and film and television and um, and it's funny because we were speaking about that, and you know, there's certain things about the craft of acting that you know my years as a musician, as a rap artist, as a writer have been they've benefited. Yeah. My acting has benefited from those years, um, and then in the sense of you know who I am as a man, I try to separate the two because to me the art forms respectfully deserve that particular attention from me. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. I don't like to to go into a role and 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 bring like you said the internal persona that 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 I've projected in my music to any character. I don't ever want to bring that to a character, you know, and at the same time as I never want my music to be influenced by whatever role that I'm playing right now, you know? Yeah. So it's it's very important for me to and and my mentor in acting um, suggests to me you know and shout out to Mahershala Ali he he suggested to me early on in my career to separate the two completely and allow them to grow and develop as they would organically mm -hmm. so um, that's what I'm doing. It's pretty amazing, man, especially to hear because I remember you speaking about when you had jumped into Harry's Law and you got your first acting gig. Yeah. You were still really trying to figure out how to how does you know how does Marvin and, and Crondon how do they exist together? Yes, sir. Uh, and it sounds like he, it's cool the progress in such a short amount of time to hear you speak about it now and like where you, you are with it. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned um, Hershey, you mentioned Sway. Are there any other like pivotal like mentors or figures that you, I mean those are two amazing ones right yeah, there? Yeah, yeah, but yeah. I'm just curious uh, who else you you've sort of talked to or confided in. Or sought guidance in? Oh, oh, so many people, man. I, I you know, these are my co-conspirators in life. Um, so many people in that sense. You know, Salim, I kill for sure. Um, sheesh, man. Um, Charlemagne the God. Very important in my career and, and definitely a mentor of mine who has been a, a, another constant for me. Um, I work with some, you know, and Cress Williams, you know, for sure, is is has been a big brother to me. James Remar, both of those brothers have, oh my gosh, man, they've really poured into me as an actor, you know, and and have given me a lot of fuel to my fire, for sure. So it's pretty awesome. Um, definitely shout out to Cress Williams and James Remar, man, on Black Lightning, because they. Man, you know that you got. I got between those two, sixty-five years of acting experience. You know, forty years with James, twenty-five years with Cress, and and they've just, you know, Robert Townsend, also is another mentor of mine. I was looking at that. Does he direct episode thirty? He, he does. Tonight. I was like, is yeah. that Meteor Man? Like, is that like Meteor Man? <laughs> Come on, like that's the five heartbeats. The five that's Hollywood Heartbeat. Shuffle. Like, Robert Townsend, Robert. Townsend? That's Robert Townsend. Robert Townsend. Exactly. I was just talking to uh, my publicist Lachelle about that on the way over here. I mean, yeah, and I was talking to him on the way over here to see if he was mm. here in town. Um, he's been a mentor of mine. We worked together on season two. He. Really, you know, you saw me like gaze for a minute because he really, really, you know, poured into me and allowed me to shadow him as a director after wow. I was done acting with him. Yeah, man. Like, and I mean, this guy, I mean, 
Yeah, man. Talk about a master class, right? Watch. I mean, yeah. Okay. See, I'm like, I'm glad you said that word, man, because that's exactly what it was. It, it, it totally. You see, I'm geeking out right yeah, now. No, right? Please, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah, it totally was a master class for me. You know, every conversation with a Robert Townsend or say a I Scott. I don't know if you know I Scott. He's also executive producer and director on Black Lightning. Any conversation with these guys, man, is you know, it's a master class. You know, and it it really lends itself to the idea of each one teach one because in our business, you know, everything is very, and I'm sure you know in, in, in your field as well, everything is, people are so guarded and sheltered by their, with their experiences, you know, good and bad, and then their roads to success and how they got there. You know, no one wants to be the GPS for you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that, to me, that's whack, for lack of a better word, that sucks um, to me. Well, because that's literally all anyone coming up is looking for, is that they're it's looking a roadmap, for just man. a little bit of a roadmap, a little bit of guidance, because yeah. it's such it's been so shrouded in mystery for years how totally. anyone got to where they are. Exactly. So when you find someone who, who's willing to, to communicate that... And, and everyone I spoke it. about on the stage today has been that for me. They've been, at some point, a GPS or a ways for me to get to what I, I do. And, um, oh man, Robert Townsend... Just I can't say enough about him. He's 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 acting in season two. He's 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 playing. Um, uh, oh my gosh, I'm the worst right now. <laughs> of 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 um, Napier. Got it. He's Cress Williams' like best friend growing up, and also works for the school board in season two. And actually, in this episode tonight, episode thirteen, which he directs. Yeah. And acts, and I was able to see him. Like I said, I shouted him, so I was able to see him play both sides, and that was just incredible, man, for me. Are you? Are you? I mean, obviously, one whoever you, when you have that opportunity, you take it. But oh, yeah. are are you taking it under the guise of you would one day hope to yourself direct? For sure. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's where you want to go. You want to direct? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I want to do. I love the 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 art of storytelling via film. I love it in all all genres of art, whether it's painting. Um, whether it's it's actual writing and, and literature. I have not written a book yet. I haven't I haven't done any paintings that I would show anyone. Um, That's but, an important <laughs> qualifier that I would show anyone. That I would show anyone. Well, I've done painting. Uh, yes, I have painted. You'll never see it. But I yes. Um, but as far as musically and through film and television, I have done some things. And and the craft of storytelling through television and film, I have such a respect and reverence for uh, that that yes every aspect of it I want to learn it I want to take part in it at some at some point so interesting that like as a as a artist musician uh, actor any any kind of artist there's a, a level of vulnerability you have to have to to make that leap from something you do in your bedroom alone or into a mirror to something you do publicly to sharing with the world right. and so it's interesting for me to see you do these different things and then when you go to painting you're like you'll never see it you'll never <laughs> see a painting or one of my pottery Pottery Endeavors. Dude? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah, that's a joke. No. I'm going to devote the rest no. of this interview to all the hobbies you've taken. No, up. no, no, no. I don't do pottery. Um, we're gonna we're gonna go over to the audience in just a second, but because we got a couple of questions out there, I definitely want to make sure we get time for those. Okay, but, awesome. Um, I'm excited about tonight's episode, of course, uh, and also tonight you're gonna you're doing a thing with Cress, right? Over at the Paley Center, or is that still? Yes, yeah. tonight we're at the Paley Center um, in New York City, doing a live screening. I just found out. Of episode 13, which I'm super pumped, pumped, pumped about. And we're doing a live discussion right after. Oh, that's amazing. Pressing myself, speaking primarily on good and evil. Very interesting. <laughs> have, you, have you guys discussed good and evil before? All the time. <laughs> All the time we do, for sure. I feel like that would come up. Off. Yes, it comes up. It comes up. Uh, like I said, we got questions out in the room, so I want to make sure. sure we get to them. The first one's going to come from, where's our microphone? I thought, they're right over here in the back. Go for it, sir. All right. Um, congratulations on the renewal. Thank you so much. Um, Thank you very much. So we have a few more episodes left until the end of season two. And I would like to know, or more like your predictions, what would happen in season three and more prime more. Uh, yeah. Can you spoil everything for us? No, no. <laughs> uh, my question is, will we be seeing Virgil Hawkins' static shock later down the road? Wow. You know, I, I get that a lot um, from the fans. I'm a fan of a Static Shock myself. Um, who knows? You know, I honestly think that 
you know, someone like Static deserves his own show, you know, and um, I, I, you know, I'm not a writer on the show at all. I, I leave the writers to the writers. I do the acting. Um, who knows? You know, if you look at the arc of Black Lightning season one and season two, there's been a lot of different DC elements infused in there. You know, um, without making its own separate show, without having a crossover from into another, you know, universe, we've been able to be self-contained, you know, in what we like to call the lightning verse. What, oh, go on. No, 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 please. Okay, please. What's interesting, you bring that up, and I was thinking about this, like this season with like there's the the Mar Markovia stuff the that's been, like, dropped in there. This is real. I mean, I mean, there's actual from the comics. These things are pulled from the yeah, comics. Yeah, for sure. Right. What, what I was thinking about is the like, MOD, the Masters of Disaster. Masters of Disaster, yeah. and just the the idea of more of more metahumans popping up. And I just I'm curious, have have you guys had conversations about? How, as the show grows and as the world evolves, how to still keep the stories focused and keep Freeland, like, the community at the center of those stories. Because I feel like yeah. as these things expand and as the world gets bigger, it, that's going to be a, a, a tightrope, a smaller and smaller tightrope to kind of walk. That's a great question, man. I hope, I hope everyone in the writer's room is watching this. <laughs> You're going to ask when you get back. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's a great question. Um, yeah, you know... A lot has developed this yeah. season, and um, but I, you know, just from knowing what I know uh, about the EPs, um, our executive producers, the 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 family in Freeland, the core family in Freeland, is going to always be the focal point of Black Lightning. I believe. I mean, Black Lightning. I think, uh, you know, and you guys watch it like like I do, and my impression of it. Now, this is me separating myself from Tobias Whale, is that it's a family show first, and a and a and a superhero show second. You know what I'm saying? For sure. Or you know, and some people might want to consider it a superhero show first, and I mean, a, yeah, and a family show second. Um, I personally, when I watch it, I'm seeing a family show. Yeah. You know, that has these elements of of fantasism and and and, and superhero um, happenings in it. So, it, it, you know, I think that they're gonna always, and I think there's enough there, you know, with the plight of the black family, you know, and the the. You know, I would like to consider it in this, you know, era and and government that we have right now. There's a resurgence of consciousness happening, and I think that with that, you know, Black Lightning is the perfect platform via family, via consciousness, to to attack the issues that we face, you know, as a people. That that's. Per Perfectly said. I felt, as soon as I asked that, I was like, my, my geekdom took over. I asked you, there was really a, a writer's question, but you did a great right. job of oh, answering thank that. You. that. Thank that you, thank was, you, thank That was you. fantastic. Um, we've got, was that two more? I've got two more questions in the room. Next one's going to come right here. I just got to say, um, best villain of 2018 and 19. Oh, <laughs> we're only in February. <laughs> thank you and so much, man. That means the world. Thank you course, so much. Of course, of course. And I was wondering, what moment... It's going to lead to you finding out how Jefferson Pierce is Black Lightning. Would it be maybe tonight or in a couple of more weeks? Are you guys trying to spoil everything? I'm not trying to spoil anything. I'm just kind of curious because he kind of like Mortal Kombat Khalil a couple of weeks ago. So I'm just curious, you know? <laughs> um, you know, I don't know, man. You know, I... I gotta just say, you know, we're getting warmer, huh? We've watched, I don't know what. Oh. <laughs> we're getting warmer here. It, you know, it, it um, based off of the last couple of weeks, um, I'm excited. You know, I was just talking to Michelle about it. I'm super excited yeah. to see uh, 13, 14, 15, and 16. Um, they all, for me, honestly, we did 16 episodes this year as opposed to 13 last year. Yeah. And and they all start to, you know, you're reading these scripts, preparing for the for the days, and you're doing the days. And you're moving on. Um, it all meshes together for me at some point, you know. Um, you got to think the, the the average movie is an hour and a half, two hours. We're doing 16 hours um, over a course of a season. So how many movies is that? So my point is that it it it. I forget, bro. To be honest, man, I don't. Yeah, I'm gonna be honest. I'm being so honest with you right now. Uh, like, I forget a lot of the details in it. Like, even on the way over here, I'm asking. I'm like, hey, I think this is this episode where this happens, or I think this is the episode where this happens here. I know certain things that happen, which I won't give away, um, that really stick with me um, and the character. But um, all I will tell you, brothers, we're getting warmer. All right. 
As uh, as our uh, our audience member so eloquently put it, you Mortal Kombat Khalil recently, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, that moment was yeah. was brutal. Uh, it was. It was so brutal. And but I think why people love Tobias and, and what and what you do with Tobias is because you get those brutal moments, but you also you get to have a little fun with them every once in a while. I loved the scene uh, when when um, uh, detectives he's in the he's in your office and he's like scanning the room. Ah, uh, Henderson. He, Henderson, thank yeah. you. I always forget. Yeah, yeah Damon Henderson. Gupton. Shout out to Damon. Yeah, and it, you guys are so great in that moment of just like the restraint, and then like Tobias like I don't know what you're talking about. Right. Because right? like that that playfulness. That's like a per, that's what I meant by instant class. Like, like, that's thank what you, you, man. Want in a villain. Thank you so much. Um, um, is w- w- thank you for doing it. It's so much fun to watch. Is that a hard balance for you to find between the dude who is crazy just below the surface and can Mortal Kombat a man, right. but also can put the charm on and 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 be the politician that he once was? Like, is that how do you ride that line? Oh man, that's a great question too. I don't know. I, when I say I don't know, I mean in, in the sense of you know the my process and preparation for the work. As an actor, it goes through different periods and times. I have different um, approaches to my preparation. And, you know, a scene like that, the Mortal Kombat scene, everybody keeps calling it the Mortal Kombat scene, um, something like that, it takes a lot out of me, you know, to be perfectly honest. The man, Marvin Jones III, it takes a lot out of me. And it, you know, it causes for me to go somewhere that, you know, inside of myself that, you know, I don't ever have to go to, you know, in my own life, thank God. Um, but at the same time, my need as an actor, my need for it to be real and and for it to be everything that you could have imagined and couldn't imagine, you know, so finding that that line there, and then and then at the same time, I think what motivates Tobias well is the fact that he's just a cool MF. You know, <laughs> I think I think that that's just what motivates him. I think that the you know it's something that you know when I was doing my homework and research for the role entirely, going over the backstory and reading all the comics and things like that, um, and I, I spoke with the the creator of Black Lightning, Tony Isabella was on set with us like our last couple episodes. And um, and, and we spoke and, and we speak all the time, but we were on set speaking about, you know, what I bring to the character. And I don't like to toot my own horn. I, that's something that you, if you can't tell, I'm not really into that. Um, but one thing I will say is that I wanted him to be completely contrast to not completely contrast, but I wanted him to contrast what was being done already in the comics. Yeah. I wanted to add a layer to him. And when I look over the entire DC universe, because that's what I did too, you got to know this, in preparation for the role before we shot one scene, I you know, immersed myself in the idea that I'm going to be playing a villain in the DC universe that has a history of iconic villains. Um, I wanted him to have something that Lex didn't have, yeah. that Kingpin didn't have, that, um, well, I'm not even going to mention the third one because the third one is untouchable. Um, um, speaking on the Joker. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, you can't touch that guy, to yeah. be perfectly honest. And, and I, But I wanted him to even, though, for, for the sake of, of um, the argument, is that I wanted him to also brings something that even the Joker hadn't brought. A layer of charisma, a layer of intellect, a layer of, yeah. that I personally, as a fan of all these people that I'm speaking, I mean, Vincent DeFroyo is a genius, bro. Yeah. And I can't, oh, come on, all right? He's a genius. But at the same time, I, 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 I saw his work, he had brought something to the DC Universe, and I I wanted to do something that hadn't been done, yeah. so you know that's what I pull from for the balance is 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 trying to, you know, um, go to levels and heights that that you know we haven't seen for a while. Wow. Keep going, man. Thank yeah. you, man. Thank <laughs> We've you. got one more question. It's going to come to us right in the front row, right here, sir. Les, hello, everyone. How you doing, my brother? I'm doing great. I I love the show and everything. Oh, thank about you, man. What you guys are doing. Thank my you. My question is: Will we see um, a merge of um, 
maybe Freeland, Central City, uh-huh. Flash, Green Arrow, s- something like that. Right, right. Um, and and that's a question for the creators because, um, you know, and we get this all the time because the DC universe is is really big and built, especially the CW universe. Yeah. Built off of the 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 crossovers and the 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 meshings of the worlds, um, you know, Black Lightning being the first black superhero family on network television, the first superhero show, black superhero show on network television, um, in which we have you know the first um, lesbian black female superhero ever in the history of superhero um, um, projects. You have um, so many elements, you know, um, a, a father, single father, raising his daughters. Um, my point is that Black Lightning in itself is a universe. Freeland in itself is a universe. That's why I think, you know, like we call our, our verse the lightning verse, because if you look at the, the, the characters from Tobias Well to, um, um, of course, the the Pierce family, who's all superheroes, Black Lightning, Lightning, and Thunder. Um, if you look at the the, you know the the um, adding of Painkiller, Khalil, to the scenario, um, the Masters of Disaster, um, Cutter. Now, yeah. you know, um, Grace Choi. Yeah. We we have a universe happening mm-hmm. in itself. My thing, you know what season two did for me, honestly? Matt, it, it, I was all season, man. I kept going, well, and to add to your, because I got a question for anyone watching, is what's going to be the first spinoff show of Black Lightning? Mm, instead of bringing more in, we've created so much. Created when are we going to start it. Yeah, fanning out? Yeah. From it. And then we can have the crossover. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. If, um, you know, Tobias Well gets his own show, no pun. <laughs> Wishful thinking here, uh, right? You know, or or if you know they do an MOD, or if they do something with Grace, or if they do, you see what I'm saying? Then that will allow for this to happen, I think. And I think that our show has so much depth and so many layers to it that that it, it sparked that even in me, you know, as an actor on the show. It's like, wait a minute, man, you know, because all these things are happening, right? You know, what's going to be the first spin? So that, yeah, so Tobias can go over to this show and wreak some havoc, or you know what I'm saying? Um, you know, and, and that's to the, to the Static Shock question. You know, that's why I say I think Static deserves his own thing. Yeah. You know, and, and even if he was to come into our, come out of our thing, right, that would be cool. Yeah. You know, he makes a couple appearances in, in BL for a season, or he's in BL for a season, the next thing you know. But it should be yeah. out of the lightning verse. As, as big as, as this has already become two, three seasons in, uh, it, it really is or should be viewed as the seed of something yeah. much bigger, its own. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, for sure. I think so. For sure. Well, I, I could do this all day, but you got places to be tonight. Oh, we got to wrap man. it up, uh, regrettably. Um, but I want to thank you so much for being thank here with so us, much, man. Thank you so much, man. I appreciate uh, it so, so much, It's so awesome man. having you here. Thank I'm, you. I'm glad you came by and had a good time. Uh, <clears throat> episode 13 is tonight. Tonight. That's right. So yeah. catch it. Uh, you can catch up as well. But uh, if you're not watching the show, you're crazy and you're missing out. You need to be watching this show. Yes, It's indeed. fantastic. Yes, uh, yes. Everybody put your hands together and join me once again. Thanking the great Marvin Jones III. Thank you, sir. Thank you.